What's up, guys? This is Jordan Haddock. What's up? This is Anthony Calavito. What's up, guys? This is Pat Sr. What's up, everyone? This is Graham Tuck, and you're listening to the New Guys Podcast presented by Ride the Wave Media. up guys uh welcome new po- new guys podcast season two episode two as always we are presented by ride the wave media be sure to follow us at ride the wave media and you can follow our instagrams not our snapchats aren't down there yet right i don't want i don't <laughs> no. want them down there i don't I want them down there <laughs> we could put patch down there our instagram handles are in the Glizzy description Gladiator. of every podcast mm-hmm. Glizzy, Glizzy gladiator 69 all right here we go um <laughs> we have a little bit to talk about here in the beginning in the NBA, but later in the episode, we really want to get into the NFL as that's picking up this weekend. Mm. Um, so oh. let's get into the NBA. Milwaukee Bucks, um, another another year, another early exit for them. They just fell to the Miami Heat 4-1 to in the series. Uh, where do you guys think Milwaukee takes it from here on in there uh, this offseason? What does the future hold? I don't really know where they can go. There's been rumors of them. Um, they want Chris Paul. I don't know what they're gonna do with a 35 year old Chris Paul getting paid 40 million dollars. Like, the thing is with a team like that, it's the same thing I see with a team like the Rockets, teams that have been great regular season teams. Is that yeah, you have your superstar and you have a couple guys surrounding them, but you really don't have a lot of assets to trade or like make moves. And big free agents aren't really gonna want to go to Houston or Milwaukee as opposed to a place like Miami or L.A. or New York or something like that. So, mm-hmm. um. Despite being a great team, I really think they're kind of caught in limbo, especially with a guy like Mike Budenholzer who just doesn't change his game plan um, no matter what happens. So I think they're kind of, you know, stuck. And they got to figure something out or else they're going to lose one of, like, the best talents we've seen this century. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, so I am very conflicted about the way that this series played out. So this, the Bucks losing was both good and bad for the NBA at the same time. Because, number one, it destroyed the narrative that super teams will dominate. Because you, the Bucks have who was the guy who was the best player in the league at points in this season. You can debate all you want about whether Giannis is your MVP or not. But it's undeniable that there were points in this season and definitely all last year where he was the best player in the league. And he was certainly dominant at times. The Bucks had a great team. They were a write-in to go to the finals. And then the Heat beat him in five. So for the longest time, the NBA was losing viewership because it was just the Heat, or not the Heat, it was the Cavs and the Warriors every year. And before that, it was the Heat and then whoever came out of the West. And so now, between Kawhi taking over last year, doing what he did, winning a championship with the Raptors, and then this year, with the Heat making it to the Eastern Conference Finals, something that many people, including myself, thought that they had no business doing anything with. It's good because the narrative that you have to have a super team to succeed in the NBA is completely gone. Their best player on that team is either Jimmy Butler or Bam Adebayo. And neither, I mean, they're both all stars, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, but neither of them is on the same level as a LeBron or a Kawhi or a Giannis. Yeah. I don't think that's a hot take at all. But at the same time, it's bad for the league because you have, I mean, you have Kawhi on the on the Clippers. You have LeBron on the Lakers, and you have Giannis on the Bucks. They're the three best healthy players in the league right now, I would say. Giannis didn't play like it towards the end, but I think that those three are the three best healthy players in the league. And the fact that between Kawhi and LeBron both being in the West, that means that Giannis was the only hope coming out of the East for them to have one of the top tier, like elite players in the finals. And so now that that's not going to happen, I think that the league is going to suffer from not having one of those elite dominant competitors being in the finals, I think they're going to lose viewership. I think that it's going to hurt them to not have either Clippers, Bucks, or Lakers, Bucks as the finals matchup for this year. So I don't know what Jordan, you can go on about that, but I I think it's just very interesting to see what the league does with this situation. Yeah, you made a good point about not only I think I think you're completely right that it hurts the league because and you like you, you made some good points, and I also think that you know Giannis is is you know, generally thought of as like the next, you know, face of the league as if, you know, LeBron and Kawhi and, you know, those guys are still around, but talking in like five years, Giannis is going to be the face of the league, him and Luca and Zion. Those are, those are the guys, Curry. you know, for, yeah. And for, for Giannis to, 
you know, how and have two seasons, um, two disappointing seasons, you could say, uh, of not making the finals. You know, uh, a couple of podcasts ago, it was probably a month ago, we were talking about, you know, who the best small forwards are in the league. And I got a ton of flack when I put Giannis at five. And I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that like my point was proven because, you know, like because of his bad performance, but I'm just saying that, um, you know, for me, I have guys like LeBron and Kawhi, like you said, at another tier above those guys like Giannis and Harden, simply because performance in the playoffs, I think is what shoots someone above, uh, you know, from tier two to tier one. And both of those players, specifically focusing on Giannis now, you know, didn't really haven't really shown up and and proven that they can come up in the clutch. I think Giannis's fourth quarter stats, the series were awful. I know he was injured and people can say, you know, all they want about, you know, how, where he, you know, got injured and whether that affected him. And, but in general, you know, you can't go down two out of the heat. You're just a better team. Um, So, you know, I agree with you. I think it hurts the league a lot because it's, that's the face of your league. Um, and he's just not performing in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, with what the, where the Bucks go from here, I mean, I don't think they need to change much. I mean, they have a they have a great roster. I mean, Middleton blossomed this year, 50-40-90, or just missed it, I think. Um, they've got Giannis, obviously. They have guys that, that you know, they, they could move like Eric Bledsoe, I think. You could see him on another team next year. Um, but they have, I mean, they've got three all-defensive you know, guys in their team. There's, there's no, there's really no reason why they shouldn't be winning. And, you know, is there really a need to move um, guys around just because you didn't, you know, make it to the finals or win the finals? I don't think so. I think it would do more bad than good at this point to trade, try and trade a Middleton or try and trade Bledsoe or move Brook Lopez to try to like, you know, get a new cast around Giannis. I think that cast can, can get to the finals. I think it's without a doubt. It's going to be harder next year at the East with KD and Kyrie coming back. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, disappointing end for Giannis. I mean, I, and it's not, and like I said, it's not point proven that that's why he's the, you know, for me, that's why he's the fifth best forward in the league. But I look at guys like Anthony Davis, LeBron James, who are torching the Rockets right now, who are both playing at an astounding level. You look at um, Kawhi Leonard, who's probably been the best playoff performer this year. Um, he had that one game where he didn't perform very well, but in general, um, And, you know, I have all those guys above Giannis, and I I think his performance this year, again, I said finals are bust for the Bucs and finals are bust for for Giannis for me to, you know, put him in that tier. And he, you know, he didn't prove prove me wrong. So Mm -hmm. we'll see what happens next year, but I don't see them doing anything this offseason. The Bucs are really tricky here. So I'm going to disagree with Graham. I really feel like this is beneficial for the league in a way. I mean, yeah, it has its downsides, but it's really um, going to be beneficial. I'm going to ca- try and draw out this hypothetical situation. So this isn't hypothetical. What I'm about to say right now is true because, like Graham said, the Cavs, Warriors every year, and then a few years before that, it was Heat versus whoever came out of the West. It was boring to watch. It was like yeah. it was played out. We all knew it was going to happen. So I personally stopped watching basketball. And I didn't want to stop watching it, but I just got so bored of it and the whole super team narrative. And then when you – now this is where I'm going to get into my hypothetical situation. Say I'm still not watching basketball, but I'm following it. I know the storylines, but I'm just not inve- as invested as you guys are. You guys are watching almost every game. I'm not as invested like that. So say I see the headline, Miami Heat defeat Milwaukee Bucks in five games. Now I'm going to sit back and say, oh, wow. Look at that. So it's going to be either a two versus a five or, hell, a three versus a five in the in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I'm going to tune in. I'm going to tune into that game just because, oh, Miami Heat, they look like they're a team. They just took out the number one team in the league, so to say. People thought they were the best in the league. Some people actually thought that Milwaukee was going to win the finals this year. Yeah. And – this number five team, a team that had no business even taking the game, the seven series, seven games. Yeah, what am I saying? I don't even know. I'm starting to go off right now. This is a team – I'm starting to lose track of my words. This is a team that had no business even going on five games with them if they were on the losing end of it. Yeah. This is, People thought this was a team that should have just been swept, should have been an easy sweep for Milwaukee. Giannis does his thing. You know the drill. And then – 
this this team beats them. So I'm thinking, wow, this team knows how to play basketball. This team, they have Jimmy Butler. They're doing their thing, and they know how to play together. They know how to pick apart the good teams like that. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking, hmm, I'm going to watch them. And even though it's not the superstar versus superstar matchup like the Bucks lakers or Bucks clippers finals that you wanted, Giannis versus Kawhi, Giannis versus LeBron, it's this – for me personally, I'm not going to go ahead and watch. A, it's not about the player for me, unless it's a guy like Michael Jordan, and I just want to appreciate how good he is. But if a team like that can take out pretty much the face of the NBA, I'm going to be invested. And especially if it's – this is a hypothetical. I'm not saying they're going to. Say it's, I don't know, Heat, Heat, fuck, Heat versus the Lakers or Heat versus the Clippers in the finals. Game one is going to – those ratings are going to go through the roof just because people want are going to want to see – people are going to want to see what happens. Mm-hmm. People are going to want to see this story, this story, this story, the Cinderella story yeah. of the well, Miami Heat. Go ahead. Um, see, I, I, I really disagree with you on that. Um, it, I don't – I think the ratings will be pretty high for the finals in general just because people have – are longing for you know basketball mm-hmm. like they'll watch it anyway <laughs> but the nba does not want a miami houston finals they don't want a miami denver they don't want even want a miami la i don't think they want miami in the finals it's it's it was a huge market when lebron was there get tony brothers on that game exactly yeah <laughs> him, and, uh, him and foster just have both of them ref but but i i, I don't think that they want um Miami from the East. I mean, they're they're going to get one of the LA teams. Let's be completely honest. So th- that that doesn't even matter. Denver's not going to you know uh, beat the Clippers, and and Houston's not going to come back. But I don't think they want Miami. I think they would much rather have the, either the defending champs or they would rather have the Celtics. Um, specifically, the Celtics. I think would be an, a Celtics LA you know, Lakers matchup is their dream, obviously. But I think that. Um, I think they go off of that star versus star. Um, you know, big matchup. If you look back at, you know, the past 10 years, you know, like, like Graham mentioned, um, you know, it's been like Miami and then the Cavs and the Warriors, like it's been LeBron Curry or LeBron and Dirk or, you know, Again. Wade and who, like, you know what I mean? It's always that star versus star. And I don't think you can really push a Jimmy Butler versus LeBron James narrative. So um, I think, I don't know. I we'll see what happens, but I, I don't think the, uh, NBA is happy with the Bucks, you know, at least getting eliminated this early. Now, okay, so I, I do have I do have a couple quick things to say. First mm-hmm. of all, I don't think that people considered Kawhi to be on the level that he is now before his playoff run of last season. Like Kawhi was a very good player, but people didn't view him in the same light as he did now. But the the yeah. league was still able to push the narrative on a Raptors Warriors finals last season i know that Kawhi then is not is is still in a different league from where jimmy butler is now but it, it it's a little similar and then the other thing that i have to say is i, I realized i didn't touch on <clears throat> bucks, like the actual bucks heat series i think that it, or, and what the bucks do from here i think that it is everything to do with that the bucks need to emulate what spolstra is doing with the heat because when you look at the two rosters the Bucks have very similar young talents to what the Heat have in Kendrick Nunn, Tyler Harrow, Duncan Robinson. They have their own Dante DiVincenzo. They have, you know, they have Wesley Matthews. He's been in the league for a little bit longer, but he's a similar talent. You know what I'm saying? They have players with a very similar skill set to what the Heat have. And the way that the Heat kill the Bucks is by shooting. So when when you get down to it, I think that what the Bucks need to do is focus more on developing the players that they already have rather than trying to tear down or make moves and completely shift things around. My thing, I have a couple things. So in terms of what Anthony said, I, I think I, I agree that they can definitely you know, push the narrative that you have this underdog team if the Heat make the finals. They can make you know, a storyline out of it. If that's part with it. I agree. Yeah, if let's say like the Heat take game one, that's a huge, that's completely different than if like they get blown out game one. You know, you're going to have a lot more viewership in game mm-hmm. two. Now I want to cut you off there, but so I can finish my little thing. So yeah. I'm not. I'm saying game one, the ratings are going to be really well. If okay. it's two zero or three zero by game three, game four, I think everyone knows what's going to happen at that point. 
there might be some people that are still, oh, they're going to, they might come back. They might come back and they might tune in just for that reason. But otherwise, I think around game three, four, if it's a 2 0 Western Conference League, I'm not going to name all the teams. But Mm -hmm. if it's a 2 0 lead over Miami, they're going to, they're just going to be like, all right, then the West is going to win. So here's another thing I just want to say before we wrap up the NBA segment here. Jordan and Grammy got me thinking about the Bucks and what they're going to do. I think the whole Bucks organization um, and Giannis, they kind of failed because you go back to last year and they're up 2-0 on the Raptors in the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, it's looking pretty good. And then the Raptors and Nick Nurse, I hate Nick Nurse, but give him credit, he switched up his game plan. He shut uh-huh. down Giannis four straight games. And then they beat him all. They beat him in six, went to the Finals. And then this year, you know, the Bucks run into Miami and – you know, when the Bucks have to play the same team several times in a row, that game plan doesn't really work. You have time to, you know, kind of negate Giannis's ability to get into the paint and everything. So it's really on Giannis the fact that he hasn't been able to develop a game outside of going into, like, barreling his way into the paint, yeah. getting fouled, putting up layups, putting up dunks. So it's on him that he hasn't really developed a consistent jump shot. And it's also on the Bucks because they let Malcolm Brogdon walk last year. Or the year before, yeah. whenever, wherever it was. Mm-hmm. And he did yeah. really well this year in Indiana, but they could have used a guy like that instead of, you know, investing in whatever other bench parts, um, yeah. whatever yeah. they spent that money on. You know, Malcolm Brogdon averaged like 17, 7, and 5 this year, which is like, you know, make a big difference. You have another guy who can kind of create his own shot um, yeah. mm-hmm. as an upside game. So it's really, I think, on everybody in the Bucks organization, they kind of just failed – all together, they thought they could just kind of rely on Giannis to get to the finals, but clearly it doesn't work. So, yeah. I, agree. Um, I wanted Go to ahead. say one thing before we um, wrap it up. So, Pat, like you were saying, um, with, with Brogdon, I think the storyline, at least in Milwaukee last year, was do they keep Bledsoe or do they keep Brogdon? And mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. decided to keep Bledsoe, and that obviously didn't work out. Right. But, I mean, you could say it did because, like, Bledsoe's a great defender and he's a better defender than Brogdon, but you know, like offensively, I think, you know, Brogdon's the clear choice, but um, I think um, I wanted to just jump over to Houston because I think Houston, they're in a pretty similar position as the, as the Bucks. Um, just because they're, they're now down to the, we're recording this on Friday. We'll have this up before the game. Uh, what is it? Game five goes up um, or they, yeah. they play game five. So they're up, they're losing three, one to the LA. The series is, pretty much over they looked horrible um yesterday but i think they're in similar positions as they've got a lot of talent harden and and Giannis, i think are pretty comparable right now in the sense that they're they're fantastic in the regular season but don't continue to play at that elite level and it's almost like both of their games are pretty readable like if you look at the dynamic nature of lebron's game or Kawhi's game um they're able to adapt and like switch up what they do. LeBron can, you know, shoot from three. He can drive. Kawhi can do the same. Like he, they're both dynamic players. I think Harden has trouble, obviously has no off ball game and he has trouble. I think whenever he gets um, pressured at all, I don't think he, I don't think he has it in him to, to get away from that double team or, or, um, you know, kind of t- stop taking shots when he's doubled. And I think Giannis is the same thing where he, you know, if you have a great, decent defender, or uh, Pat, like you were saying, you know, mm-hmm. Bam Adebayo defended him greatly. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, last year, Kawhi Leonard was was the main guy, and they pretty much walled him off last year where they just, you can't drive to the rim, kick it out, and make the other guys shoot. And Chris Milton, you know, couldn't do that. So, um, you know, I think they're in kind of similar positions of, like, they're in kind of like a weird gray area of, like, Houston, you'd like to think they have enough talent to get to the finals because they've got two all-star caliber players you'd like to think the bucks are able to get to the finals but if you look at the west next year it's gonna you're gonna throw the warriors in there and they're gonna be a top mm-hmm. team you're gonna have john morant have another year under, or have a year under his belt you're gonna have jaron jackson back most likely and that's gonna be a team that you know is gonna take a playoff spot probably there's gonna be a lot of competition in the west and then in the east like i said katie and Kyrie, you're gonna have john wall and bradley beal probably both together again Mm-hmm. So the time, the time, you know, the the frame where he, both Houston and the Bucks, you know, had a chance of getting to the finals was right here and right now, and it looks like if Houston ends up, you know, not coming back, they're both gonna, you know, disappoint their cities greatly, 
And so it'll be interesting to see. Those are the two teams to watch, I think, this offseason. Does does Houston move Westbrook again? Does do they I'm not gonna say that they're gonna move Harden, but there's talks about do they do they just abandon the whole, you know, seven second rule where they get a shot up within seven seconds and they they let D'Antoni walk or they move Harden. I don't know. I think those are the two teams to watch because they they're they're the guys that are just in some gray area where you really don't know. They don't have young guys that, that they're um, obviously other than Giannis, but they don't have like a young core that's up and coming. So the, those would be the guys, those, <laughs> those would be the guys, uh, the teams that I watch. Definitely. That's all I got though. All right. Product of NC baby. So Campbell if university it, ground. If that's it for the, um for the NBA, I'm just going to leave on this note. Nick nurse is a fucking bitch. Yeah. I hate him, but. Mm. And Russell is a walking brick. A Russell who? Brick. Russell West Russell Brick. You, hey, you want to give me his stats for the past two games? I'd love to hear him. Uh, hey, I haven't yo. pulled him up. We got right. a schedule. Yeah. You don't want to pull him up. Uh, you West Brickaters don't want to pull him up. He almost made it through the NBA. Averaging 27 on like 49%. All Star kind of numbers right there. Go ahead. Two, two, yeah, for, uh, two, what, two, for, two for 14, Harden, I think. Are we done? But, uh, are we done? I'm good. Hey, look, I was done. Okay. But if I, I, I'm, good. Guy, I'm, good. I'm good. Hey, you're if going on. You're going on. Guy. I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. Go ahead. NFL. Okay. Okay. So, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the NFL is picking up this week. Week one Sunday matchups. I'm really excited for it. Even though wait, I got to I, 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 I got to I got to You guys sound like <laughs> It's so <laughs> <time>! <laughs> All right. Yeah, good. Um, like, yeah. and it's always one matchups. We're what do we agree on? We're just gonna go down the line and give our pick yeah. for each game. Uh, right, yeah, we'll go down the line. Yeah. So I'm gonna I've pull got, up each of them. I've, I, you you wanna go ahead? I've got it down here, but it, you you can do whatever. I was gonna pull up each of them and then we'll go in alphabetical order, starting right. first name. So it's gonna go me, Graham, Jordan, Pat. And that's how we're gonna okay. do it. I think that's the easiest yeah, way. Cool. I think. Oh, okay, okay. You want to do yeah by first name. All right, I got you. By first name, all right. So <laughs> yeah. let's let's start off simple. We're gonna go Miami and New England. Uh starting off week one. <laughs> uh yeah, I forgot that I was going. Oh, New England's gonna win this game easily. <laughs> New England's gonna win this game. Yeah. That was, that was quick and easy. So uh I I can't argue with you much on that one. I think that Cam Newton's gonna be doing big things. Lee's better be on watch. And you know Fitzpatrick, Mister September, but I don't care. Patch by Millie. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Still don't care. I don't care. I don't. Care. I don't care. Just What'd you say? Just I just want to know what you okay. said. What did you say? I don't care. <laughs> yeah, the Dolphins. Just, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that sound clip because it goes on for so long. We gotta wait for it. <laughs> I don't know what the last goes don't just a little bit longer than you think it does. So, so so for us, Pat's clean sweep across the board. Next matchup, we got the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Washington football team, which still sounds weird to me. I think any other name would be good besides football team. But hold on, hold on. on. So I I have to go in on the Washington PR department for a minute. So the other day, I'm going to see if I can pull it up on my phone right now. They put up a post on Instagram and it was like one of the worst marketing mistakes I've ever seen. So it was just a terrible slogan. It says no distractions, no doubts, no name, but team. But the no name is like really big compared to the rest of the text. And just uh, it's just basically roasting themselves for not having a name for their franchise. And it is the most Washington thing that I've ever seen in my life. Continue. It's funny because I have the NFL app pulled up and it says Eagles football team. Like, <laughs> it's the Wait. funniest thing. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take Philly. I think they're a bit of a sleeper this year. Everyone's sleeping on them because I think everybody's expecting Dallas to come out of that division. But I feel like the Eagles could make some noise this year. Yeah. I also yeah. have Philly. I think that uh, – there are definitely some weak spots on their roster, but there are far more weak spots on Washington's roster, so it doesn't really matter this week. Yeah, I think um, – I don't know what the deal is with Alistair Jeffrey. I don't know if he's playing week one or not. I haven't looked at, like, the recent injury report. That's a great but, question. Dude's been injured for um, two years. <laughs> but uh, Jalen Rieger, I think, is a go, and I think that's all they really needed. Just 
him and Ertz, I think, can handle the the like horrible <laughs> secondary that Washington has. So yeah, I'm gonna go Eagles. I think Wentz is in for a great season, so I think he starts it off week one. Yeah, I'm pretty much on the same page. I'm a little worried about Philly's defense. I think their secondary is still very uh, spotty, but lucky for them, Washington's offense is worse. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much to worry about there. Yeah, another clean sweep this time for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, next next matchup I got on my screen. Uh, I think it's the game that I'm probably going to be watching because of my area. New York Jets, Buffalo Bills. Everybody's saying the Buffalo Bills are going to take that AFC East throne. I don't think it's happening, but I do think they um, they start off the season with a win over the Jets. Yeah, I also picked the, Buff- the Buffalo Bills to win this one. I think they're going to have a really good team this year. Their defense is dirty. It's so good. Um, the addition of Stefan Diggs is huge. The Jets are – somewhat of a sleeper team i'm not saying that they're going to do anything in terms of the playoffs especially with the coaching staff that they have right now but their roster is a lot more talented than people give them credit for the fact that they won seven games last year with darnold missing a lot of games because of mono goes under the radar Uh, i don't think they get enough credit for it but their receiving core is garbage and the buffalo secondary is one of the best in the league so they don't stand a chance Graham, yeah, you like, sound like every New York Jets fan ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Literally. just saying. I'm just saying. I don't okay, hate Sam Darnold. A lot of people don't like Sam Darnold. I don't think he's a bad what? quarterback. He just hasn't been given anything to work with. Yeah. He's never had a number one receiver hey, in his he career. Had, he had Robbie Anderson. Okay. Well, <laughs> like a, like a number three, like a really good number three receiver. <laughs> an elite <laughs> number three receiver. Hey, I like him in Carolina this year. I'll I'll just leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's um, good. I I, uh, I agree with Graham. You can clip that, but um, I think he's right. <laughs> he's right that uh, the the Jets are not like in. I know what you mean, but like not like a sleeper team, like their playoff. But like people are kind of writing them off as like a four win team. When like I don't think that's the case. I think the I think I'm gonna take the Bills, but I think it's gonna be a lot closer than people think. Um, I think if Gase can like rely heavily on Bell, like he should, like the Steelers did. Um, you know, give him like 25 carries a game. Like, I think he can find offense because it's really their only offense without, I mean, they have Darnold's, I like Darnold too, but their receiving core, like you said, is horrible. Totally. So, um, I think, I think they can find something, uh, some way to stay with the Bills this week. Uh, but I, I would have Buffalo winning. Yeah. I think you guys pretty much covered it all. Um, I was going to say something about the, yeah, the Bills, I think, honestly, have one of the best rosters in football, but, they're going to yeah. live and die by Josh Allen's arm. So, yeah, they're still going to win, but yeah, yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see. That Another clean sweep. I don't mm-hmm. think this next one's going to be a clean sweep. I think this is <laughs> always a fun matchup because both teams have been consistently good over the last five years. Divisional matchup, we got the Green Bay Packers. We got the Minnesota Vikings. I see Pat Rock in the Vikings jersey today, AP. There you go. Oh, damn, this is a really tough one because – I think Minnesota's roster has gotten worse this offseason, but I still think they're a good team. And they're really going to rely on Kirk Cousins, but at the same time, I feel like Green Bay, I don't think Green Bay's gotten better. I don't think Green Bay's gotten worse. I still think they have the same team as last year. And that same team was better than Minnesota's team last year. So Green Bay wins this game. They're going to go on the road and get a win. I disagree with you. I think Minnesota takes this one out. I think that, I think. Throughout the course of the season, the Packers and Vikings will be pretty close in terms of their talent. But the thing that sticks out for me is that Minnesota, their entire roster is very top-heavy. Their talent is either very, very good or non-existent. And that's very evident in their defense especially because you have some of the best players in the league at their positions in Harrison Smith, Eric Kendricks, uh, Yannick Ngakwe now. They're going to – they have stars – but then their depth behind them isn't what it should be for them to be competitive. So I think they're going to lose a lot of close games down the stretch. But for this week specifically, their biggest week is their corner. Their biggest weakness is their cornerback spot. And the Packers just simply don't have the wide receiver core to be able to take advantage of it. I don't think the Packers are going to be able to stop Dallin Cook and I because they got destroyed in the NFC Championship game on the ground last year. Didn't address that need at all. And I, I think it'll be... Same old, same old with Dalvin Cook taking over on the ground, winning the game for the Vikings. Yeah, I am going to go with Anthony. I think the Packers pull it out. But 
I agree that I think Dalvin's going to Dalvin Cook is going to be a huge problem like he is every game, but specifically with the Packers. But I disagree. I think Devonte Adams will be able to dissect. I think I know that their receiving core is bad, but I think Devonte Ad- that connection between Rodgers and Adams against a pretty poor cornerback um, uh, group is going to be detrimental to the Vikings. And I think the Vikings are going to have that problem throughout the season with any elite receiver and, and decent quarterback. I, like people can say what they want about Rodgers, but he's still, he's still Rodgers and he's still, yeah, he still has enough in him to be able to make great passes to Adams. And Adams is such a great receiver that he's able to grab, you know, some unbelievable catches and he's able to get open. He's a great route runner. You know, I think, I think they're able to steal it, but it will be a close game. Well, I, I have one thing to say before Pat goes on. This won't take very long at all. I, here's the thing, because I know that Devontae Adams is a problem, but because the Packers receiving court isn't very good beyond Devontae Adams, it's very easy for the Vikings to double Devontae Adams and then just yeah, trust their Adams depth. Yeah, it's very easy for them to double Adams and then just trust their depth to cover the rest of the SAR That's receivers, fair. like Crabtree that the Packers have. <laughs> And <laughs> that's a good reference. Shout, a sound bite. That's a reference. <laughs> Shout out Richard Sherman. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I think they should do, at least in terms of the game plan on defense. Yeah, this I'm gonna is a toss up game, too. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, no, 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 I agree, Jordan. Um, yeah, I'm going to side with Graham. Just, you know, we have a little two two action. Yeah, here. yeah, um, yeah. I think my thing with the Packers is right. like they might have had not the worst draft, but one of the worst drafts. Oh, but yeah. No, it was the worst. Yeah. They they addressed okay Jordan Love, that's stupid. And then <laughs> you drafted AJ Dillon, and you had Aaron Jones who led the league in touchdowns last year. So yeah, no no Dalvin nice. Cook might have, but still you had Aaron Jones who had a great season last year. So he was up there. Yeah, from the Packers' perspective, like, what are you doing with that? And second of all, you know Graham, like you said, the Vikings they are a very star-studded team. Um, where they have holes, you know they have holes, but I think that the Vikings will be able to at least. I would play them because Aaron Rodgers is a year older. They really only have Devontae Adams in terms of receiving weapons. And I think the Vikings star power is going to be enough to overcome that. And then on the defensive side of the ball, the Packers didn't really get any stronger. So um, Dalvin is probably going to run all over them. One thing uh, I just want to say to end it, I think, like, Grim, I get your argument with Adams, and it's, like, completely feasible and, like, it, it – it might happen that he just gets shut down because mm-hmm. they can just, you know, double him. But I think the same thing can be said about Adam Thielen. Now that Diggs is left, like the Vikings, I know they just drafted Justin Jefferson, but like a rookie in his first game, you're not expecting him to like, right. you know, go off for a hundred yards. They said so that he, about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Hilaire. And then, yep. yeah. But I think it's a little bit easier for a running back running because I think is. like, especially so, in the Chiefs offense. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I th- I'm i not saying Dylan will get shut down or anything. I, I mean, you could say that about pretty much every core that only has one, you know, elite guy. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Will, will Diggs' departure yeah. hurt? A lot of people think, well, Thielen's going to get more catches and he's going to get more yards. And But it's also like you have to look at it from the other side, like you said. Like, it's easier for teams to focus on Thielen now. They don't have those two go- two elite guys that you can slot up on opposite sides and, like, good or, good luck covering both, so. You're very right, but the the reason that I don't think that won't play a huge effect this week is simply because the Packers' run defense is so bad that they're just going to game plan to feed Dalvin the whole game. So that will be a liability for the Vikings later on into the season, but for this specific game, I don't think it will play a huge deal. Fair. Yeah. One thing I want to touch on the Vikings, one more thing. Um, you know, I hope I'm right with this. I think this could be like a great season for Kirk Cousins. I think having – just Adam Thielen instead of having like two receivers. Obviously, there was a little bit of like drama mm-hmm. with Biggs last year because he didn't really get the ball throughout like the first like five weeks or something. Um, I think it could be really big for Kirk Cousins in terms of confidence, um, leading this Vikings offense with like really one elite receiver and then the rest kind of young guys. It's a good opportunity for him to show that he is really worth that contract because I think mm-hmm. you know last year he beat the Saints in the playoffs. That's big too, but hopefully he can continue that into this year. Um, and get off on the right foot being the Packers week one. I'm going to cut all of you guys off there for the next matchup. We got another divisional <laughs> we were game. Done. We were done. Yeah, we were done. All right. Another divisional game. We got the Colts taking on the Jaguars. Not a lot of people are expecting a lot from the Jaguars this year. I think they're expecting them to snag that number one pick. But the Colts are a team that, like, like the Jets, they're writing them off completely. But I'm not saying they're a playoff team, maybe depending on how Jacoby Brissett plays, because I think they have a pretty good roster. 
Uh, it's like they had they had Andrew Luck all those years. He was like their star. He was the franchise. And then he goes ahead and retires. As soon as they build a team around him, they build him an offensive mm-hmm. line. They give him a defense to work mm-hmm. with. And people just write him off that way. I think T.Y. Hilton's still doing his thing. They have one of the best offensive lines in the league. I think they have the best offensive lineman in Quentin Nelson. I actually know someone who's distantly related to him. Kind of cool. But <laughs> but you got I, – I think their defense is really good too. You got Malik Hooker. You got Darius Leonard. They got a really good young core. Their running backs are good. I think Marlon Mack's good. Naheem Hines, mm-hmm. NC State. NC State commit. I know that's Graham's. Rap, rap. Yeah, yes, sir. Not NC State commit. He's an NC State alum. But I think they're a really underrated two-headed monster in the backfield. And who's their tight end now? I forget. Is it still Eric Ebron or no? No, he left. It's going to be Doyle. Jack Doyle. Yeah, it's going to be Jack Doyle. I think he's extremely underrated as well. So You can't remember I, his name. <laughs> yeah, because I remember, I remember him being good. The Colts have always had decent tight ends that were extremely sure. under the radar. That's true. But – the Colts are going to win this game. They're not going to prove much. They're not going to prove. Oh, look out for the Colts! They're playing the Jaguars. But I think I'm going to pre- I'm going to give a little hot take. This is going to be a clean sweep for the Colts. Amongst us, I'm not proving you wrong here. I uh, I think the Jaguars are going to be horrible. It speaks more to that than how much I believe in the Colts. Simply because I think you, you hit all the spots. They have a good young core on defense. Their receiving core isn't that bad. Um, their offensive line and running back room is unreal. And they drafted a running back in the first couple of rounds. I can't remember who it was, but it was Jonathan like Taylor. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor. Like he's he's gonna be really good. He's gonna yeah. be really good. Best, best um, back in the class, my opinion. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. But my thing is this game, it won't hurt them very much <laughs> because they're playing against Jacksonville. But I don't trust Phillip Rivers at all. I've touched on it in past episodes. He was horrible down the stretch last year for the Chargers. He is the reason that they didn't succeed last year. Like that Chargers roster was set up for success to win now. And he did everything wrong with it. And I, I, I'm sorry. I, I like I like Philip Rivers. I wish he had won a ring when he was with the Chargers. But I don't believe in him anymore. And it, I, I hate to say it, but Colts are going to have problems later I'm on. Gonna I, I'm going to be honest. I forgot Philip Rivers was the quarterback of the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly kind forgot. Of the radar. Yeah. So, I think uh, Tom Brady. I think the Tom Brady talk really. And he only yeah. Off. He only signed for one year too. So it, we'll, the Colts are a mystery from here on out. But yeah. I think they win this week. Yeah, I think you guys hit on everything. Um, last, I'll, I'm picking the Colts. Last thing I'll say is that Jacksonville backfield is such a mess right now. With like, they're they're like Chris so Austin. like yeah they're so murky with like what. <laughs> I guess like the, I think that um, the talk is like, well, Robinson's going to get majority of the carries, and then today they there was a report that came out said so it's going to be more of like a like just hot hand. So like no yeah. one knows who's going to go, and neither of those none of those guys are like elite running or like breakout running backs. They're just like throw together guys that are just there. So that's mm-hmm. going to be hard to watch. Um, but yeah, I'm going with the Colts as well. Here's my thing. Everybody's right now. Oh, and think they're going to get the number one pick. But not if Gardner Minshew has anything to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to do everything in his power to make sure they win the game. Joseph um, Stafford will be no, yeah. the Jaguars, the Jaguars very gonna limited win. power. <laughs> Jaguars are going to get cooked. I think um, the Colts' run game is honestly probably the scariest in the NFL. Um, Frank Reich has said that he's going to handle Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor as like a one and one punch, basically. Yeah, so, I saw that. Yeah, I love that. I think Jonathan Taylor is the best back in this class. Um, but here's the thing: if it's a close game anywhere down the stretch, I'm picking the opposing team to win because Philip Rivers is probably going to shit his pants throwing an interception. <laughs> I don't trust, like like Graham was saying. Thank I don't you. Any farther than I can throw him to close out a game. So, if this Colts team is going to succeed, they have to be up significantly <laughs> going yeah. into the fourth quarter of all the games this year. And well, I'll say that. they're going to win this week, but. That's a gimme. So I think the Colts win with their with their run game this week. I think Jacksonville's uh, run defense is like pretty poor. I think so with the everything on that roster is pretty poor. Yeah, sure. That that's fair. Except but, their like, receiving group. Their receivers aren't bad. I was gonna say I really don't even know their receivers this year because yeah, I they still know. have DJ Chark. You got Chark. They still oh, yeah. have Westbrook. They drafted Lavisca Chanel. I think that's how you Westbrook? say his name out of Colorado. 
Uh, yeah, D.D. Westbrook. Yeah, I know. Jordan, watch Shut up. I just Shut perked up. up. <laughs> <laughs> they have D.D., they have Chark, they have LaVisca out of Colorado, the rookie. I think he's going to be decent. Um, but beyond that, they're it's just sad. And I still think Miles Jack and Josh Allen can do some wonders. Oh, yeah. Defense. I think they can put up some good numbers. I had to yeah. think about who's on their defense. I think the Jaguars are probably the saddest story in football right now because they had New England on the ropes in the AFC Championship. What was it, mm-hmm. two years ago, three years ago now? That was a that was a really good fucking team outside Blake of Blake Bortles. Bortles. Outside of Blake Bortles. I think that was an yeah. outstanding Blake team. Bortles I thought they were great well that postseason, though. He did. I was very impressed. He, he did not give them but but let's be honest. Was he really the long term answer? Because I no. thought the Jaguars had figured their shit out no, at this we'll point. It too. He's not on a team anymore. I thought they had their shit figured out. I'm like, oh my god, this team's scary. And then we saw the the downfall, literal mm-hmm. downward spiral. Um, that's enough of them. Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, two really teams that no one cares Mediocre. about. Mediocre. I think the Bears are another sad story because I think they had one of the best defenses in football a few years ago. Mm-hmm. With Khalil Mack and that whole lineup, Khalil Mack's still there, and I don't think the Lions are there right now. This one's really tough, honestly, because they're just two teams that you don't know what to expect from going yeah. at it. You got, I still think, uh, what's it called? The Bears have one of the more elite defenses. Their secondary is actually pretty freaking good. You got Eddie Jackson, uh, what's his name? Kyle Fuller, I think, is an extremely underrated cornerback. Um, their front seven is still good. I don't know if uh, Gold is still there, Goldman or whatever his name is. I'm forgetting his name. I know Akeem Hicks, former Patriot. I'm not sure if mm-hmm. he's still there. Khalil Mack, obviously, we hit him. But that offense is just such a question mark at this point. It's like, what's Mitchell Trubisky going to do? You don't expect much out of him. And that's why I think that this this Bears team doesn't win. But on the other side, it's it's the Lions. I think the Lions – and the Bears' defense are the two main points of this game. And one of those two units are going to win this game for them. So if I'm going to put my money on something, I'll put my money on the Bears' defense to win it for them. Because I don't think the Lions – the Lions, I don't think the Lions' defense is there, and I don't think the Bears' offense is there. So they're on two completely different spectrums here. So defense wins championships, defense wins games. I can't go against the defense. I got the Chicago Bears. I think you pretty much hit everything. Um, I really like – I'm not going to lie. I like the Lions' offensive skill positions the way they have it set up. I mean, they need a little bit of a deeper receiving yeah. core. But their running back room isn't bad. They have I a good – they have a great – yeah. Yeah, they have a great uh, wide receiver in Kenny Galladay. Matthew Stafford, I mean, he's one of those players that's getting to the point that people say he's underrated so much that it doesn't apply anymore. But people forget how good he is on a consistent basis. And I think that he, Jones, right? Yeah, yeah. Wait, what'd you say? Marvin Jones, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they do up. still have Marvin Jones. Yeah, you threw me off because I was talking about Stafford. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you're good. Um, I, I think the offense is going to do fine if they can get some kind of production from the offensive line. I think you, you made it incredibly clear that it's going to come down to whether the – Detroit defense can stop the Chicago offense. And I rely much more on uh, Allen Robinson to be able to make plays down the field than I do Jeff Okuda to lock down one of the better wide receivers in the league in his first game in the NFL uh, as a number one cornerback. I think he's going to have a decent rookie year, but Allen Robinson is a tough matchup. Uh, So, yeah, I got Chicago in this one on the road. And go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, I agree. I have Chicago as well. Uh, Galladay's out, I guess. That was confirmed today. Is which he? Which makes it, yeah. Oh. oh. Which makes that makes that easier. That, that makes, makes it easier. easier for Chicago. But the Bears also don't have Robert Quinn. So, I mean, it, it's that I'll take that trade off, obviously. But the yeah. weakness <laughs> the Bears defense of it. But, yeah, that, that line's offense without Galladay. I mean, good luck. So, I'm going to take the Bears. Yeah, I was actually pretty sold in the Lions before you told me Galladay's out. Um, <laughs> oh, oh! before we go on, Mike Evans just got downgraded to doubtful. Yeah, I saw that too. Oh, that changes things too. Yep. Um, that doesn't change much for me. Yeah, I mean, we'll yeah. That later. what was it saying? Lions, right. I'm, I'm still going to pick the Lions in this one just because, yeah, Chicago has a great defense, but, like, 
It's the bears. <laughs> it's Mr. Trubisky. <laughs> and yeah, oh, that's so our I first of the season, right? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know what the Lions O line is looking like, but I think they have DeAndre Swift and Adrian Peterson. Either one of them, it's probably their best running back they've had since Barry Sanders. So that's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hopefully their run game can find some legs because they haven't had a good rusher literally since Barry Sanders retired. Um, KJ wasn't that bad a couple of years ago. Yeah, carry on Johnson or, is decent. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. But either way, I'm going to go with the Lions. I'm going to trust Matty Staff to pull it out if he doesn't get injured. Um, so, yeah, I'll go Lions. So that one, we got three for the Bears, one for the Lions. Next matchup is a bit of an on ball. We got the Las Vegas Raiders versus Ew. the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Raiders are another team that I thought were supposed to be really freaking good. When they had Khalil Mack, Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, that core was really, really good. But right mm-hmm. now, no one really stands out on that team to me on the offensive side besides Derek Carr, uh, what's his name, Josh Jacobs, who I think is going to have another yeah. outstanding year, and Jared Cook. He's still there, I believe, right? Who's their no, tight end? They have Darren Waller. Darren yeah. Waller, that's the name. I'm, I apologize. Um, he had another. He had a good breakout year last year too. I he think did. he emerged as a top ten tight end in football, but. I agree. Other than those guys, though, that team really doesn't stand out to me as Henry a contender. Ruggs. Henry Ruggs is good. I'll give you that. But I think Derek Carr is, ha- hasn't had that top receiver since Amari Cooper left. He hasn't had much to work with. I, and they proved that – Derek Carr has proved that he can be a top quarterback in the league. I'm, I'm a very big Derek Carr fan. Mm-hmm. But for me, I think the Teddy, the Teddy B story continues. I, I had the stat up here. He's – 16 and 6 since as a starter since 2015. And I like the Panthers. Their defense isn't very good, but their offense is I don't I wouldn't say top tier, but it's it's average at best because they still got guys like DJ Moore, CMC, the whole gang. But that's why I'm going to take Carolina and I like the Teddy B. I like Teddy Bridgewater's presence on the field and I think he can lift any team to a win. So I'm going to go ahead. This is kind of a, a matchup that can go either way. I think it very well could be a high-scoring game, but I'm going to pick the Carolina Panthers to win this one. So, obviously, Panthers, my hometown team. You got Christian McCaffrey, who I think is one of the top three overall players in the NFL right now, if not higher. Uh, that might be a hot take, but he's just yeah. insane. They have DJ Moore. They have DJ Moore, who's a top 15 wide receiver, in my opinion. They brought in Robbie Anderson. They have a really good front four. Uh, People sleep on that front four a lot. And I know that everybody's like, oh, Graham, talking about the Panthers because he's from North Carolina. But (laughs) fuck them. I don't care. I'm picking the Raiders this week. (laughs) Wow. Don't forget about – I forgot about him. Curtis Samuel. I think he's a good number two for Teddy B as well. Um. I'm going to go with the um, Raiders as well. I think uh, Teddy B is a bit overrated just because I know he succeeded with the Saints last year when, when Breeze was out, but like that's like probably the best offense in the league. And like when you have, when you're surrounded by Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas, it's like pretty easy to like do well. Um, yeah. And even when he was on the Vikings, when he was starting, like Diggs was there, AP was still there. Uh, I think Jarek McKinnon was there. Thielen was there, but I don't think he was like, he wasn't. He didn't break out yet, but I think he still had like decent pieces around him. I know CMC's there, and he can carry an offense like he did last year. But I don't know. They're. they're I don't have that much confidence in DJ Moore, um, as their one at least. And I don't know. I think. I think uh, Josh Jacobs carries this Raiders team at least this week to a victory. Yeah. And before gonna... Pat goes, actually, Pat go. I. I'm gonna keep hey, that thought in hey, the back. I'm, I'm happy you're intrigued with my with my answer here. <laughs> I am gonna pick the Las Vegas Raiders in this one. Um, I'm I like what you're saying, Anthony. I, I like the Derek Carla because people forget back when they were um, they were one of the top teams in the they AFC. Oh yeah, they were, were a playoff team yeah. before their car broke down. Like, and it's it's all gone downhill from there. Um, <laughs> but I think this is Derek Carr's last year, really, um, <laughs> to prove that he's, he's the guy in Oakland. What are you guys laughing at? Him breaking his leg. No, no, oh I my said, God, Anthony! That I was they were a playoff team. I said they were a playoff team before their car broke down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's 
Oh, poor guy. Um, anyway, yeah, I think Josh Jacobs is, is probably going to carry the load in this offense. Derek Carr, he's got Tyrell Williams. He's got Darren Waller. He's got Henry Ruggs. Um, Tyrell Williams is out. Ryan Edwards. Oh, all right. So he's got Henry Ruggs and he's got Darren Waller. I don't really know who Brian Edwards is, <laughs> or, and I'll be honest. Uh, I, guess he is, I just think they have the Panthers slightly outmatched. Uh, hopefully Derek Carr can prove that he's the franchise quarterback this year. But probably not. Derek Carr <laughs> is the Joe Flacco of today's NFL. <laughs> Good comparison. At least Joe Flacco won a ring. True. He made the playoffs. The Raiders might have won a won a ring the that year if the Derek Carr didn't get hurt. Uh, yeah, that one they, year would, they would have made a deep run if Derek Carr didn't get hurt. Yeah, I don't know. If because they okay, won. so guess we'll never know. So so here's here's what happened. Rundown real quick. So Derek Carr broke his leg in I I think it was the last week of the regular season. Week sixteen and, or seventeen, was one of those two. Because yeah, I remember when so it was, it was so, sixteen because they lost the last game because Connor yeah, Cook. And if they had if they had won that last game of the regular season with mm-hmm. Connor Cook, they would have been in a not all so they ended up play, having to play as the five seed in a wild card game at it's the Houston. Texans. Right. Um but if they hadn't lost those last games of the season, they would not have only won their division, but they would have had a bye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think that they had a very good chance of getting to the Super Bowl that year, but obviously it didn't happen. I'm rambling at this point. Hmm. I'm going to stop the rambling and save my Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> debate for when we're talking about our own time. So we next up, we got the Cleveland Browns, Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore was a bit of a playoff disappointment to say the least, last Uh year. Um, I think they're going to have a really good bounce back year this year. I'm picking the Ravens, but I'm not counting out the Browns. I'm not saying they can't win the game, but I think it's going to be a lot more competitive than uh, Browns-Ravens games of the past just because this is Cleveland's last shot. I think this year doesn't work. They're going to restart again, and they're going to be the same shitty Browns as they always are. (laughs) But Baltimore still wins this game. It's going to be competitive, though. I think you're capping. I, I got Cleveland this week. Oh, man. That's huge on Cleveland. I am big on Cleveland this year. I think that Cleveland, number one, finally has an offensive line. They signed Jack Conklin, which is really, really big. He's a great tackle, uh, and he's going to help Baker a lot. I think that the game is going to come down to Nick Chubb because Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters are disgusting in the secondary. And I don't really trust Baker to make good decisions against either of them. If it's one-on-one coverage with either Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, that's really a shitty situation there. But <laughs> it, <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. Uh, but, <laughs> but I think that the Browns can run on Baltimore pretty well, especially considering that Nick Chubb is one of the top backs in the league at this point. If you say he's yeah. not, then you're wrong. Uh, I think he could very easily lead at least the AFC in rushing this year. And the best, the best two-headed monster in football between him and Kareem. Exactly. Hunt. Yeah, Kareem Hunt as well. Yeah, they brought in Austin Hooper too, so that provides them something to work with uh, mid-yardage situations over the middle of the field, maybe a quick out route. Uh, so, I think that they can move the ball on Baltimore, and I mean, I don't know. I think that the Browns pass rush is going to be the key because Miles Garrett's coming back from suspension after that whole deal with the Mason Rudolph incident last year. They have a decent secondary at the very least. And I just don't trust Lamar's arm yet. I know that he proved a lot, obviously by winning the MVP last year, but I think that Cleveland's ability to get in the backfield, stop Lamar, stop the run is going to be their key to being able to suppress the Ravens offense this game. Uh, I'm going to go with the Ravens, but Graham makes a good argument. Like, I can see if you're going to pick an upset, I think this may be a game you could, because yeah. the talent level on the Browns is pretty high. It's just that, like, what we've seen from them. Yeah, it's the Browns. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Ravens. I think, I know Pat was saying he thinks Jonathan Taylor is the best running back come out of the draft. I think J.K. Dobbins is the best running back come out of the draft. So the Ingram-Dobbins uh, duo I think you're going to see similarly to how Kamara and, and um, Ingram were, where you could just use either one, and they both have, you know, pass catching abilities. Um, but yeah, I think. I mean, Graham makes a good argument. I mean, the the, the Nick Chubb. It's is, not unfeasible. 
Yeah, it's not. And Nick Chubb is a top five running back in the league. You could argue he's top three even, I think. Um, no, you can't. No, I think Sorry, you can argue that he's better than Ezekiel Elliott. He's not better than McCaffrey, Saquon, or Zeke, I think. No, I think you can make an argument he's better than Zeke, but he's at least top five. Um, he doesn't have so, a body of work yet. And so um, I think that I think that if they, as long as Baker Mayfield strays away from the pass um, enough and doesn't try to force balls to Odell and Jarvis and they can, you know, lean heavy on the run, they might be able to squeak one away and, and steal one from the Ravens in week one. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the safe bet and go uh, Ravens. I agree with Jordan here. I think, Graham, you make a very compelling argument. For Cleveland to win this game, I think pretty much everything will have to go right for them yeah. or everything will have to go wrong. Yeah. But more like... Last year, I think it was week four. Cleveland actually beat Baltimore. That was right before yeah, they went. They did. History. And Baker yeah. Mayfield they them up. beat Seattle too early in the year. Yeah. So, like you said, this is a very talented team. Um, you know, the steamers are really, um, obviously, they can't really put it together. But if they can take advantage of <laughs> their run game against Baltimore, which Nick Chubb actually had, I think, 160 yards in that same game that Baker – um, through for around 300 um, against the Ravens last year. If they can perform up to their potential, they'll definitely have a chance in the game. And if Baltimore plays down, you know, we'll see, like you guys said, Lamar Jackson's arm. I'm not going to doubt Lamar Jackson again because last season I did and he proved me wrong. So I'm going to go with the Ravens. But I would not be surprised, like you said, Jordan, or somebody said it, if you had to pick an upset for this week, I think Brown's a really good team. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. And I, def- um, I definitely have the Browns versus the spread this week. I know we said we were picking, doing these picks just straight, but Baltimore's favored by eight and a half. I, I don't think they cover at all. So, yeah. Nah. So we've all lone wolfed. Uh, Graham is rolling with the Browns. Pat's rolling with, I forget who he said. He's rolling with the Lions. I'm rolling mm-hmm. with the Panthers. So Jordan's yet to do one. Uh, we'll, we'll see if he does. Uh, so we have... Up next, Seahawks Falcons, another game I'm really not all invested in. I think Battle Seattle, of Earth, baby. <laughs> Clip that. Clip that no, no one, no one on Spotify saw that, but that was <laughs> Pat just imitated a bird. That's all you we're gonna so say. Did. It was you really did. funny. That has left the chat. That's it. If Check us out on YouTube. If you, guys, if you guys have ever seen the show, it's always sunny in Philadelphia when they did like a wrestling event. And they were all, they were like, oh, we're going to be the birds of war. And they dressed, they dressed like eagles with like feathers and shit. And they ended up looking like a bunch of chickens <laughs> doing that exact thing. And that's what that reminded me of. Oh my God. So, that was pretty funny. <laughs> all right. I'm thinking the Seahawks this week. There's not much of an argument. I am too. Russell Wilson's going to go dumb this year. And I don't trust the Falcons at all, even though they Shout brought in. So Shout out Julio Jones. Oh, yeah. Julio's the G. I like Julio. And they brought in NC product, Tar, uh, Tarboro native, Todd Gurley. But, uh, yeah, the, the Falcons aren't going to do anything, especially not in the division they're in. So, hmm. see yeah, Hawks. I'll, go, I'll go Hawks as well. You can quote me on this. Russ Wilson's going to go balls deep in that Falcons defense. Hey, yes, yo. sir. It's not going to yes, be good. sir. Glizzy hey, Pat with yo, the quote yeah. of the day. <laughs> so many weapons. On that team, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Josh Gordon, if he gets approved for reinstatement. Oh, my God. It's going to be so good. But the Falcons also. I don't want to sleep on the put Falcons. Shirt, please. Can we please put that on a shirt? <laughs> what? Balls oh, my deep. God. Go ball deep and, like, uh, ball deep. <laughs> testicle. The thing is, the Falcons, Matt Ryan's probably the most underrated quarterback of the 2010s um, or in NFL history. Julio Jones, obviously, I think the best receiver in the league. Todd Gurley could have a bounce back year. So they have potential on the offensive side of the ball. The thing is, the Falcons always disappoint everybody. So I'm not going to get my hopes up. Seahawks, not going to be close. Another clean also, sweep. Uh, back to my, my spreads. The easiest money this entire week is Seahawks minus one and a half. That line is so low. It's so it's unbelievably low. Ridiculous. Yeah. Slam. Put a grand yeah. on it. I would. Um, next up, we got the Los Angeles Chargers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals are a lot different team this year. Everyone uh, knew they were going to be absolute dog shit last year. This year, maybe they're a little better. I think they're a little better this year. I think Joe Burrow is going to have a pretty solid year. And I don't think the, char- the Chargers are a mess right now. 
just all over the place when it comes to the team getting fans in the stadium. Mean, obviously, there's no fans in the stadiums this year. But look at look <laughs> at the game good. last night between the Texans and the Chiefs. Uh, they had they were limited fans, and there were still more fans in that stadium than a, a Chargers home game. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually true. Like I'm not even gonna yeah. lie. I think yeah, actually I think that was a proven statistic that there were more fans that's there. Probably than true. Chargers. So uh, the Chargers are a mess. I don't think Anthony Lynn's a good head coach. So I'm gonna take the Bengals. All right. So here's my thing. I think you're right. I think that the Chargers are a mess of an organization right now, but. Tyrod Taylor is a decent quarterback. No more, no less. He's a decent quarterback. The thing that intrigues me the most is that the Chargers' secondary is still very good. They brought in uh, – they brought in – still have Casey Hayward, I think. They brought in Chris Harris Jr. from the Broncos. Their defense is still banging. They have talent. They have Joey Bosa. They have Melvin Ingram, all those guys. I really believed in them last year until Phillip Rivers just threw them in the shitter. Uh, and their offense is decent. They have Hunter Henry still. They have Keenan Allen on an extension. They have Austin Eckler. Their lines are eh, but I really trust that Chargers secondary to be able to make plays against Joe Burrow in his first NFL game. I don't think the Chargers are going to be able to do much of anything throughout the course of this season, but I don't think that Joe Burrow, as as pro-ready as he is, I don't think that he'll be able to take advantage of the few mistakes that those cornerbacks will make in his first NFL game. So I'm going with the Chargers. Yeah, so um, I agree with Graham. I'm going to go with the Chargers too. I agree that I think they're actually their defense is, like you said, going to win them the game. Joe Burrow, like going out there in his first NFL start against a pretty mm-hmm. good defense. Like it's not yeah. no slouch. Is it? Is it like a top like cream of the crop? No, but is it Yeah. like definitely up there and like a, a higher tier? Too sure. What do you say, Pat? I agree. It's like, in like the ten to twelve range, which is so yeah, cool. yeah, they're in the better half of the league. Yeah. If you put them top ten, they they could squeak into the top ten. Yeah, yeah. But another reason is because Babs on his parlay of the week that he'll release, that will probably already be released when we when we um, put this out, has the Bengals as one of the choices. So uh, that that automatically means they're going to lose. So I'm just going to go with the Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, you're yeah. fired. Yeah, bro, I've got to get confidence in his picks. <laughs> he hasn't given me any. Anyway, before there's any more bab slander, I'm gonna jump in here, and I'm gonna go with the Cincinnati Bengals because nice, nice split. Confidence. I have a lot of confidence in the new Broadway Joe, Joe Burrow. <laughs> I do too. And and he has AJ Green for like the first time in <laughs> two years. I feel like he's played. Tyler yeah. Boyd is also very good. At that, that wide guy. receiver two spot, uh, I believe their O line has improved this off season. I want to say they made He's some. Jonah moves. Williams back. Yep, yep, that's huge. And then I think Joe Mixon is going to be the difference maker in this game. Um, Bill Belichick proclaimed best running back in the league. I think he's going to make a big difference, make things a lot easier. Um, for Joe Burrow week one. I think he's going to start his NFL career off with a win. It might not be the prettiest win, but I think he's going to get it because I don't think the Chargers can put enough stuff together. Um, to get the win. Also, I wish Justin Herbert was starting this week. That would have been so sick to mm. have that matched up week one. Yeah. I think you have a valid point about Joe Mixon being able to win the game for them, but I don't trust Zach Taylor to be able to make that game plan instead of just leaning on J- Joe Burrow and AJ Green. Yeah, I don't really, I really don't know too much about Zach Taylor, but I don't have, I agree, I don't really have a ton of confidence in terms of him game planning. Uh, I think Anthony Lynn's not a bad head coach. I think he's very. He's not. I think he's very. You know, it's very unfortunate that he's had Philip Rivers. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, he was put in a shitty situation. Much like Odell, yeah. he's in a shitty situation. Okay, I can get behind that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So nice even split with that game, but Graham hit it. The Showtime one. I think this is going to spark the most debate. <laughs> This video. Okay, Buccaneers Saints. <laughs> I think this was the. Um, I think this is. Was there a delay there? No, bro. Wait, I didn't even hear it. I didn't hear it either. That's why I was trying to play the video in my head yeah. exactly. And I'm like, all right, I'm timing this. I'm timing this. I'm timing this. Go. Okay, so, so, so for the people who are listening and don't. 
somebody just moaned in my hallway. I'm sorry. I, heard that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hear that one on the soundboard before, Graham. Shut up. <laughs> so Graham, Graham's at video. home and just moaned in his hallway. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot. So that, he forgot you know, to tell us it's female. To come right, later. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I, uh, that video is so 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 loud that it doesn't even register when i play it through the skype and yeah. so, so nobody can hear it except oh, for me oh so i have that just like getting blasted with that when you play oh, yeah that? i can hear i can hear <laughs> very clearly through here <laughs> but y'all we'll insert it after though definitely we already did at this point mm -hmm. yeah so I'm going to say before the Leonard Fournette signing, we knew this game was going to be good as soon as Tom Brady signed with the Buccaneers. This is way before Gronk signs. We knew this game was going to be good. Tom Brady, Drew Brees. I have the statistic. This is the first matchup of two starting quarterbacks over 40 years old in NFL history. Like, this is some crazy shit we're seeing right now. And I think we all knew this was going to be a highly competitive game. Drew Brees, Tom Brady, two, what, top five quarterbacks ever? We, we could safely say. Tom Brady being the greatest ever, but then they add Gronk. It's like, oh, let's take a step back here. I think this is going to be a little bit more competitive, maybe with Gronk, but I wasn't really convinced yet. And then they go ahead and grab Leonard Fournette. I'm like, oh, God. I was thinking the Saints the whole way through, and I still think the Saints are going to win now. Even knowing that Mike Evans isn't going to play, I still think the Saints are going to win this game. Uh, I, th I just think they have their shit together. Uh, the Buccaneers have only – this team has only been together for so long. And you got Tom Brady who's aging. Gronk hasn't played football in a year. Who knows where the fuck Leonard Fournette's out. And now Mike – I think Mike Evans and Chris Godwin were the two – the two reliable. guaranteed – exactly. They were the two reliable players on that offense to to just absolutely ball out against the Saints. But with all those questions up in the air, we know how well the Saints team can play together. Not much has changed – around that offense. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take the saints. I agree with you. I'm going to take the saints and it has everything to do with how good the saints are and nothing to do with me talking bad on the Buccaneers. Um, I think the Buccaneers have a great team. I think their defense, especially their secondary leaves a little bit to be desired, but um, the C not the Seahawks. What am I saying? The saints, they have one of the top three or four wide receivers in the game without question, maybe put him a little bit higher, depending on how you think. But Michael Thomas is amazing. They have Alvin Kamara, who I think is one of the top four running backs in the league, if not three. I personally think he's better than Ezekiel Elliott, but that's just me. And I think that... Shame. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Kamara is they that freaking dude. They did add Emmanuel Sanders this offseason, too. They did add yeah. Emmanuel Sanders as well. See, and I think Trey for me, can be really good too. I trust the Saints' offensive line so much more than I trust the Buccaneers' offensive line. And everybody has said it for years. The way that you beat Tom Brady is by blitzing the fuck out of him. And the Saints have the ability to do that. Plus, they have a good enough secondary that if he does manage to get it downfield, they can make a play. I, I think that it's going to be a very close game. I think that both teams are highly talented. But I think New Orleans just has the edge. Um, I thought I was going to be the lone one here and go with the Saints, but you guys both stole the thunder. Um, yeah, I'm going Saints. I th and like what Graham said, it's no hate against the Bucs or like, oh, I don't want Brady to win or whatever. It's yeah. just like mm – -hmm. It's straight up with, with Most likely yeah. without Mike Evans on the Bucs because like yeah. we said, he's, he's doubtful. He's probably not going to play. It leaves – uh, a, a Gronkowski that hasn't played in you know a year, over a year. Um, and a half. Yeah, and and Chris Godwin, which Chris Godwin, Godwin is great, but like like we make we keep making the argument of like if it's just one receiver, it's easier to slow down. So you lose yeah. like a, a Mike Evans, it's it's a little bit hard with Brady. I think they're still gonna have you know they're still finding each other and um, on the football field and and trying to you know formulate a, a a good offense. They've got all the talent there without a doubt, but. Week one, if there is ever a game they're going to lose as a team, I think this is week one because they, they're just not used to each other, you know, in an actual game yet, especially with limited training camp. So I'm going to go uh, Saints. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Saints, um, especially for that last part you said there, Jordan, is that this team has not even played a snap of real football yet together. Yep. Yeah. Meaning the Buccaneers, obviously. 
So um, obviously in terms of talent, especially on the offensive side of the ball, they're one of the best teams in the league, probably a top three trio with Mm -hmm. um, Brady, Evans, and Godwin. Well, and not to mention the addition of Fournette, obviously is huge. But yeah, the Saints obviously are one of the premier teams they have been for the past couple of years. I think Drew Brees is probably his last year. Um, I think they'll be on a mission this year uh, to really try to get in there, obviously, to the Super Bowl. But that being said, I think later in the year, should they match up, I don't know when the next matchup is, but I think it's going to be very different. I think the Buccaneers are going to be clicking, I think, maybe by like week four, week three. Uh, It's going to take a little while to get used to each other. But I think once they do, they are going to be scary and they're going to be able to contend with the Saints. um, Definitely in a shootout kind of, you know, Mm. aspect. I don't know about I don't know if their defense is on par with uh, the Saints quite yet, but I'm going to pick the Saints this week. But I don't think that's necessarily anything against the Bucks. Like you guys said, it's more testament to how great um, and how deep New Orleans is as a team. Mm. For the record, before we move on, uh, the next meeting between the Saints and the Buccaneers this season is week nine. So we will revisit this in about oh. two months. Oh, that's that's actually like perfect. Good to know. Yeah, about midway so through. We got, we've got four more matchups to cover, but I think this one and the last one we're going to cover are going to spark the most debate. Uh, this one being the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers, another great divisional matchup. San Francisco coming off that Super Bowl appearance last year, and I don't think much has changed about this team either. I still think they have one of the top five. You can even argue they have the best defense in football just because I know how well, I know how well this team plays together. I'm, this team has been shoved down my throat for the last year and a half or so because my brother is a big-time San Francisco 49ers fan, always has been. I'm not going to give him shit. He's been with that team since they they were running with – what's his name? Alex um, Smith. Gabbard or whatever his name is. Oh, Gabbard. That's before Alex Smith. Wow. Okay. <laughs> no, that was after. But he, he, they was were it? really good. No, I think, he, I think he became a fan of Alex Smith and the Niners. And then he they had those few winning years, but he stuck with them. Through those really shitty two and four, two and four, uh, two and fourteen seasons, so I can't knock him for there. He deserves to see that sure. winning season. I'm not going to knock Ooh. him for that. But uh, yeah, I just know how well this team plays. Um, this is obviously the first time we're going to get to see Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins play together. I think DeAndre Hopkins is going to do his thing. I don't think he's going to be amazing. Not that he's not going to be amazing. Don't get me wrong. Top number two for me in the league, but San Francisco, I think, has. It says they have the number one pass defense in football. And I still think they – I don't think they have number one. I think New England is number one in pass defense just because, you know, Stephon Gilmore and J.C. Jackson, the McCourty twins, the whole the whole gang. But I think San Francisco's run game is still amazing. They still have – I don't even know who they have anymore. I can't even say. But it's still pretty freaking good. I don't remember who they lost. I, I can't remember. They remember just lost Brieta. Yeah, they lost Brieta. Yeah, yeah. They Raheem Mostert's still there. He's still a yeah, tank. Yeah. They still got George Kittle. Uh, it's going to be a close one, but I say San Francisco wins this one. So here's my thing. Uh, number one, San Francisco is without Debo Samuel for the first couple of weeks. That's a big hit, especially because they lost Emmanuel Sanders in free agency. So they're without their top two receivers from last year. And uh, besides the fact of that, uh, you've got – their pass defense, you were saying it's number one in the league, but if Richard Sherman plays like he did in the Super Bowl where he just looks like burnt toast the entire time, their <laughs> safeties aren't all that, and I couldn't even name who their second quarterback is, or cornerback, I mean. I think that the Cardinals are going to be able to do a whole lot because I really believe in Kenyon Drake, number one. DeAndre Hopkins, I think, is the best wide receiver in football. It's very close with Julio Jones, but I think he's the best. And then you go even deeper – First of all, I've always said that the Cardinals have a very deep receiving core. And I've really been high on Hakeem Butler because his highlights at Iowa State were just unreal. And they released him this offseason. So that really made me upset for him. (laughs) But uh, he'll get picked up somewhere. I honestly would not be mad at all if we picked him up. He's a great talent. Besides the point, they still have Larry Fitzgerald. They still have Christian Kirk. They still have Andy Isabella. I think that the the Cardinals are going to be able to produce on offense against this 49ers team. And that that's only because Kyler Murray can play make plays with his legs. Mm-hmm. If he couldn't, he wouldn't stand a chance 
because the 49ers defensive line is going to run through the Cardinals offensive line like Swiss cheese. But <laughs> Kyler Murray can make magic in the backfield and get the ball to DeAndre Hopkins, who has some of the surest hands in the entire league. And I think it's going to be really close, but I think the Cardinals can pull it out. i got to agree with Graham again. Clip it again. Um, Let's go. Uh, I think this is like my upset. I think the, the Cardinals, I think, are getting a bit overrated overall because people are like Murray for MVP. They're going to, you know, they might they might grab, uh, they might win the division. I don't think they're going to win the division. Um, but I think that they have enough talent now. You could even make the case that um, they got rid of DJ for, for Hopkins, obviously. Drake has broke out last year, especially yep. towards the end of the year, as a top, you know, whatever. I don't even know where he would rank right now, where I'd have to really top look at it. Tier. Top tier running back. I mean, people can doubt whoever they want, but he was ranked pretty highly when he was in Miami, but Miami's Miami, and that's where people go to die. So it's like, you know, he, he, he has to... <laughs> It used, used to be Arizona trade. too. Arizona used to be people go to die, not anymore. Yeah, but I mean, R.I.P. Landon think, Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> I think when uh, Drake got traded, um, a lot of people were like, "Look, he's got the talent, and you know, he's now away from, um, you know, the Miami coaching staff, and I think um, he has the ability to become a, like like Anthony said, a top tier running back. So mix that with with." Uh, you know, DeAndre Hopkins, like you said, Graham, some of the surest hands in the league. It can it minimizes the, you know, Kyler Murray's, um, you know, risk of overthrowing him or, or um, you know, making bad passes just because you have, you know, such a great receiver to catch on the other it end. It has a wider margin for error. Exactly. That's yeah, that's what I was looking for. Um, and I, I still am not a firm believer in the 49ers offense. They, they, they're still a huge. I still am not someone to say Jimmy Garoppolo is a top 10 quarterback in the league or anything like that. I don't believe in their offense that much. Um, you know, they, like you said, Graham, they toasted um, in the NFC championship. Their running game was you know, great. Oh, <laughs> Bro, I just agreed with you. What the fuck? <laughs> um, I yeah, but I mean, that. like Raheem Moser, like toasted them in the NFC championship. But I think, uh, I think the Cardinals, just their offense is extremely explosive now, so I think they take it. Yeah, I. It's tough. I'm gonna go with the Cardinals, but Ooh. Jordan was saying yeah. towards the end. Um, I don't. It comes down to me for whether or not you trust Jimmy G to win you the football game. And maybe if he had Emmanuel Sanders and Debo Samuel, I'd be like, yeah, okay. But he really only has George Kittle and Kendrick Bourne. I think will be his number one receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Duke. Arizona State. Yeah, Brandon, are you? you, have, yep. you, you yeah, I got him on the fantasy team. You, you have a rookie, and you have George Kittle, which, you know, that's great. But at the same time, the Cardinals have some versatile defensive players. They have guys like um, Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons, Simmons, baby. Isaiah Simmons, obviously huge. They have Buda Baker, um, one of the premier young safeties who actually got an extension, I think, a few weeks ago. Uh, like Graham was saying, also. They still have Pat Pete. What's yeah. that? So still Patrick Peterson. Still, yeah, yeah, still have him, have him too. Chandler Jones. Jones. Quarterbacks of the decade. So, Chandler Jones. If um, Kyler Murray can extend plays with his legs, obviously the Cardinals don't have a great offensive line, and we all know that San Francisco defensive line is terrifying. But if he can keep plays alive, much like Patrick Mahomes did in the Super Bowl, you know, when they were coming back from that deficit, yep. much of that damage was Patrick Mahomes extending plays, getting outside of the pocket. Um, he had like a huge 30 yard run, whatever. If Kyler Murray can do anything like that against the San Francisco 49ers defense, I think it's going to definitely, um, lead them to victory because San Francisco, I think on the offensive side is not going to be able to produce, and, um, really at all. And to Graham's point about Sherman, he, he didn't perform well in the Super Bowl, and he doesn't get any better with age, obviously. So a year yeah. going by better, yeah. doesn't reset his, you know, it's not like a young guy like Jalen Ramsey a couple years back. If he didn't perform, it's like, all right, well. You know, he's a he's a young corner. He's still, you know, he can just, you know, get better in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Like it, a years go by with Sherman, it doesn't it doesn't look any brighter. Yeah. Um, well, to so be fair, to be fair, I think I, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Richard Sherman made an All Pro team last year. I'm he pretty did. sure he did. He did yeah, the, so the, he's a good cornerback. But yeah, yeah, but is he's, he's not? But I don't trust. Yeah, he he's not. A, he's not in the category, obviously. With like to me, like Gilmore Humphrey. Um, those type of guys, like there's their tier above. Yeah, P- yeah, exactly. I think there's there's a uh, pretty Davis. significant jump there. Mm-hmm. So, 
I think if you you feel obviously feel more comfortable if like Gilmore was in his place, uh, you know, guarding Hopkins um, as opposed to Sherman. So I think that even that little bit of um, question when he didn't perform in the Super Bowl, it kind of shows a little bit of his of his um, his downfall from obviously like five or six years ago with the whole um, when you know um, when they was with the Seahawks. But I think that. Uh, you can make the argument Hopkins is the best receiver in the league and having Sherman, an older player in his first week have to play against, you know, Deandre Hopkins, one of the premier guys in the league. It's, I don't know. I it's, he, he's so Deandre Hopkins is such a diverse receiver and he's a great route runner and he can go up and grab shit. So it, there's really no way you can, you know, run him off the field. And I think that, uh, like, like Pat said, if Kyler Murray can make the plays, you know, last a little bit longer, like Mahomes did, um, Sherman won't be able to keep up with Hopkins. Yeah, I want to well, say... Here's the thing. Here's yeah, the go. thing, too. Real quick. All Cliff Kingsbury has to do is call plays that line up DeAndre Hopkins on the opposite side of the field from Richard Sherman. Because Richard Sherman only plays one half of the field. He doesn't line up with the number one. I he hate just that, plays. Bro. I hate it's that. so stupid, it's but it's, so what, it's what happens. Yeah. So all the Cardinals have to do is put DeAndre Hopkins on the other side of the field from Richard Sherman. And it's, that's all they have to do. It's game over. Another thing with that, though, Griff, is definitely um, – well, first I want to go back and say DeAndre Hopkins, I think, is the best receiver in the league, not Julio. I think Julio's too. But let's say they do that and they line up DeAndre Hopkins on the opposite side of the field from Richard Sherman. You have Christian Kirk line up with Richard Sherman, and Christian Kirk's a guy who's – I'm pretty sure he's a burner, and he can take the top off of a defense. He's fast. Team. He's so really you know, fast. Yeah. If, we know Richard Sherman can't stick with him, so they're going to have to provide some help over the top, and that could also open up the offense in the middle for guys like their tight end Max Williams or – Maybe you have Andy Isabella running in the slot. Obviously, you still have Larry Fitzgerald, one of the best <laughs> of all time. So yeah. if Cliff Kingsbury can carve up – or not carve up. Yeah, I guess carve up that offense uh, – defense, I mean. Sorry. Or if he can craft up like an offensive game plan to exploit um, San Francisco's passing defense, then this could really get ugly um, with the speed and with Agreed. the youth they have on that offensive mm-hmm. side of the ball. Great. Yep. So if that's all we got for that, guys, there's a lot of background shit going on behind me that I'm trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> but the rest of the games, we got some primetime matchups. We got Graham's Dallas Cowboys versus the Los Angeles Rams. And now, <laughs> listen, listen I'm, I have read all of Graham's articles. Thank about, you for that. I appreciate I, you. I, yeah, of course. He's, I'm sold on the Cowboys. I think they could go to the Super Bowl this year. And when I told my dad, who is a – Big time New York Giant fan that the Cowboys were going to the Super Bowl this year. I was almost disowned. I was almost kicked. Out of <laughs> but I'm not letting that stop me. I think the Cowboys are going to be a top tier team. This team, it's boomer bust for them. I think out of every team in the league that needs to have a really good year, at least conference championship, it's the Dallas Cowboys. Just because Jason Garrett's out, I think he was the problem. Dak's got his money. Dak is gonna perform to that level this year you got Zeke still their offensive line is still still there they're older but they're still there <laughs> excuse me you got Amari <laughs> Cooper. you got that whole core and we've expressed I'm not going to get into it the defense is amazing this year on paper uh we've talked about it in weeks past so Cowboys easily beat the Los Angeles Rams this year or this this God. um this week guy knows what he's talking about so I I obviously, if you've read my shit, you know that I am so unbelievably high on the Cowboys. Um, there are a couple teams that they have this season on the schedule that they don't match up particularly well against. Um, so it's not like there'll be some world beaters. Like Graham is going to come on here with a Cowboys jersey and just yell, "How about them Cowboys?" Or after <laughs> oh, no, okay, so so here's the thing: I actually really don't like the Cowboys. I really don't like them. I would never, I you know. Since I've come on this podcast, I've worn a different jersey every week. I pride myself on my collection. I would never buy a Dallas Cowboys jersey ever in my life. I don't like the Cowboys. And I have friends that are Cowboys fans, and even they have given me shit for picking the Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> so I, I found that very interesting. But this week, um, I was listening to uh, Ride the Wave and Boston's Big Three's newest podcast, with Joe Stafford and Chris Matthews, the former Excellent Seahawk podcast. and Ravens wide receiver. Excellent first episode. Yeah, it's a very good podcast between the two of them. And they were talking about the Rams this year, and Joe Stafford was talking about where he had 
the Rams in his power rankings. And he was talking about why he had them so low. He said, the only reason I have them so low is because Jared Goff isn't elite at absolutely anything. And he's hey. dead on. Yeah, That's he's insane. dead on. He's uh, not an elite in mm-hmm. terms of accuracy. He's not elite in terms of launching the ball down the field. He's not elite in terms of moving around in the pocket, making plays with his legs. He's, an, he's the definition of an average build quarterback. And I don't think that the rest of their team is good enough to carry them through that. So especially against a team that has as much talent as the Cowboys, I think the Rams can make noise in certain games this year because Jared Goff is just that guy where he goes off when he wants to go off. And then when he doesn't, he shits the bed. But the Cowboys are just too good for him to be able to do that and get away with it. So I've got the Cowboys by a million this week. Yeah, I'm going Cowboys too. Uh, I'm a bit higher on Jared Goff this year for for a bounce back. I don't think he's. I agree with he's like he's come down a level from where he when he made it to the Super Bowl, um, especially last year. Like he just didn't look on at all. But I think um, he he's I th- he's probably my breakout guy this year. Not breakout. Um, comeback uh, player of the year. Really? Um, yeah, I think I think he has. That's a hot take right there. Maybe, maybe he, I don't know if he necessarily wins the award. I don't know when the last time a quarterback won that award. Maybe last I don't year. think it's very common. Tannehill. Who, who is it? It was Tannehill. Just yeah. Ryan Tannehill won. Oh, he won it. Okay, well then, never mind. It's pretty common. Yeah, I'm gonna go Jared Goff. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, I agree. I think the Cowboys talent, like we say it every year, though, which is what's kind of worrying. Of like, you're like, well, the Cowboys, like they're they're just they have immense talent. You know, they're gonna they're gonna win, and then they lose, but. If you're picking like week to week, it's hard to pick against Prescott, Elliott, Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup. Like, and a good defense. Like, it's it's really hard to pick against that. Really, any week. I know you said some of the matchups are tough um, later in the season, which I'm sure that there are teams that I mean they're going to lose some games, but you know they're they're pretty heavy favorites for for a Super Bowl win this year, and I, it definitely starts week one against the Rams. Yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you guys have said. Uh, I'm going Cowboys. My only concern with them is probably their cornerback situation, which isn't great. Uh, but the thing is, like Graham said, and like Joe said, um, Jared Goff is the most mediocre quarterback I think I've ever seen in my entire life. So I'm not going to trust him to carve up this um, Cowboys defense. And when it comes to the Rams, uh, they have, they're have they a very like star-studded team. They have guys like Cooper Cup, obviously. Um, Robert Woods, they have Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, two guys who are really probably top three at their position on defense. And I know Aaron Donald's probably the best defensive player in the league. Um, Definitely over the past five years, he has been. But other than that, like, I'm pretty sure their linebacking core is among one of the weakest in the league. I think their best linebackers, like Samson Samson Ebukam, like who? Like, Mm. I really don't trust that defense to be able to stop this absolute monster. Absolute (laughs) juggernaut. What? (laughs) (laughs) I don't I don't trust this Rams defense at all to stop like this juggernaut of a Cowboys offense. So I think the Cowboys are gonna probably have a sizable victory over the Rams. Mm. Yep. So I, I didn't expect much debate there. Um not much debate to be expected here. Pittsburgh Steelers, New York Giants. The Giants are another dumpster fire of an organization right now. Um yeah. I know I know many, many people who are big time New York Giants fans, as I am in New York, that hate everything about the team, the way it's run, the coaching staff, the players themselves. They just they just don't have their shit figured out. And I'm not that high on the Steelers this year just because I'm not sure how Ben Roethlisberger is going to play because I really don't know if I can say how he's going to play. I mean, I obviously can't tell you exactly how he's going to play, but – Part of me wants to say he's going to play well, but part part of me doesn't believe him believe in him as well. That's the only reason I'm not on either side of the Steelers this year. I just don't – I really don't think their offense is there right now. They got Juju, and I'm not the biggest James Conner fan. But it's the Giants. They're going to they're gonna pick up an easy win here. Yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Um, Steelers minus one and a half is another one of the easiest money line bets this week. Um, They're one so, and a half. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the line. Let me look. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Sure. On the roads. No, they're they're minus three and a half. Excuse me. On okay, the that's road. still even not still. It should yeah, be like still <laughs> easy easy money. Um, so go ahead and take advantage of that if you can. 
because the Steelers are going to thrash the Giants. And speaking to Anthony's point, one of my sweet mates, we share a bathroom in college, is a diehard nice. Giants fan. Is a diehard <laughs> Giants fan. And so doing fantasy drafts over the last couple of weeks, I'm consulting with him as I'm picking my teams. He's like, you know who's a sleeper this year? Evan Ingram, Darius Slayton. Dude, you should take Saquon Barkley. Like, I had the third <laughs> pick, and he was like, can you trade up to get Barkley? I was like, dude, the draft starts in five minutes. Calm down. <laughs> so it, it's comical. But, yeah, Giants aren't going to do much of anything, I don't think. Yeah, I don't, I don't have much to say in the game. Just, I'm going to pick Steelers, but it's kind of like – it's not something I'm going to watch, probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm in the same boat. Steelers, um, Steelers have, like, such a good defense. Um, I think that Minka Fitzpatrick trade they made last year is probably, like, the best trade of the whole year. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Value. Um, TJ Watt, you know, obviously those are two defensive player of the year candidates. The Giants really don't stand a chance. Not that I, I like the Giants. I like some of the young players. I like Darius Slayton. I like Daniel Jones. I like Saquon, but, you know, they just – they really don't have the personnel to compete. So, Steelers by a lot. The last yeah. time that a team where their number one wide receiver was Golden Tate was a contender was, like, 2012. So, I, I don't trust it at all. <laughs> yeah. I forgot they had him. Oh, my God. Yeah, not a lot of debate there. But I think this one's going to spark a little bit of debate. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be watching this game because it's 10.30 yeah. at night. 10.30 – I mean, I should watch it, but 10.30 at night. And I have to get up for real school. I can't get up at – I can't get up five minutes before class and just log on to my computer. I actually have to be there in attendance this, um, the night after this game. Can we, can we get oh. an chat for our boy Anthony? <laughs> for real. I, I know what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, see, I see you reach it. I know what he's going for. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Tennessee Titans, <laughs> Denver Broncos. Uh, I honestly thought this is very similar to the the Buccaneers Saints situation. I thought Denver was going to win this game, not easily, but Titans are picking up Jadeveon Clowney. Hmm. That's that's confirmed, right? Because I really didn't yeah, see that. I haven't been on my phone all that much. Um, That's a real game changer right there. And with Von Miller going down, this really is balanced as all things should be. Yeah. So I think those are really tough (laughs) ones. I really like this Denver team. I don't like them, but I I don't like them because Denver is probably like top three most hated sports teams (laughs) in our little hierarchy. Um, They're right under the Indianapolis Colts at number one. But (laughs) – I think they have a really good team this year. Their offense is going to be really hard to compete with. But Tennessee can do their thing. I think Derrick Henry is going to have a decent game. I like Denver's defense, but Von Miller's out. So Tennessee um, – Tennessee. Derrick Henry could really run all over them. But in the end, I have confidence in the Broncos in this game. Wow, okay. Shaking it up a little bit. I really thought you were going to go with Tennessee there. Um so I'm kind of on the same page as you. I really think that Derrick Henry could go off, and he has the ability to be that kind of player. But the thing for me is that Derrick Henry has shown time and again that he is a late-season back. He shows up when his team needs it, which is exactly what they need him to do, but he's not as productive in the first couple of weeks of the season. It's just not how his career has played out. So you take that. You combine it with the fact that the Broncos have a pretty good secondary. Justin Simmons is a great safety. They've still got some decent corners over there. The loss of Von Miller hurts because if he and Bradley Chubb can ever get healthy at the same time, that defensive line is going to be amazing. Uh, I don't really trust their run defense, which is why I say that um, Henry could go off. But I don't think Tannehill, A.J. Brown, Johnny Smith, I don't think those guys are going to be able to do much of anything. Jadavian Clowney is a big ad for the Titans. But I just think that the Broncos receiving core is going to be able to absolutely expose the Titans secondary. Like Malcolm Butler. Exactly. <laughs> like their their secondary is not all that. And when you combine the fact that the Broncos have Drew Locke, who played incredibly well at the end of the season last year, plus the receiving core that we've already talked about a couple of times. It's just really good. I think it'll be a pretty high scoring affair between Denver and also having 
Noah Fant, who's a very, very good tight end, massively underrated, probably top 10 in the league, in my opinion. And then you have uh, their running back room, which is right there with Indianapolis and the scariest in the league, Pat, in my opinion, because you've got Melvin Gordon, Philip yep. Lindsay, and Royce Freeman. And yep. that running back room is dirty. Um, I think the Broncos are just going to be able to win a shootout. I think that's what it's going to come down to. It's going to be who can put up points the most. The Broncos have the running game and the receiving game, whereas the Titans are simply going to be relying on Derrick Henry, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm going with Denver. I'm going to disagree. So we'll see if this is if I'm the lone one who picks the Titans. But uh, um, maybe it's a little bit of recency bias because I the last thing I saw of Derrick Henry was him running over um, mm-hmm. us and the Ravens. But um, Every, but um, yeah. yeah. But I think so. From what I heard about Cortland Sutton, he went down yesterday with a shoulder injury. Um, Mm -hmm. He got x-rays and it was negative. It's like an AC joint sprain. I don't know if he's going to play, but if he doesn't, that solidifies my Titans pick. But I think even him being a little bit injured may pull back the Broncos offense a little bit. Um, So that's why I'm going with Tennessee. I agree. I think it'll be a shootout. But I think uh, at this point, I'm going to take the the more trusted quarterback, in my opinion, in Tannehill, who's been here for a little bit longer than Drew Locke in this, in this close of a game. Um, and I think Derrick Henry still gets his own. I, I don't think he goes off, you know, for 150 and two touchdowns, but if he can eclipse a hundred yards, grab a touchdown, it, as long as he's a threat and they have to close in and, um, you know, prevent, prevent him from, you know, stack the box and prevent him from, you know, breaking away. Um, I think it'll open up the, the game a little bit for Tennessee and, and Tannehill can do his thing. I'm going to, this is a really tough one for me because I, I do not like Ryan Tannehill. I really don't trust him at all. I don't think he's worth that contract. I don't really think he's good at all. I think last year was a fluke. Um, basically fuck Ryan Tannehill. But anyway, the thing <laughs> is, I don't know if I trust this. I, I love the Broncos. I'm very high on the Broncos. I love Drew Locke and I love, I think they, they have one of the most talented young offensive cores probably the most talented offensive young core i think in the league with drew Locke, jerry judy corlton son they just drafted kj hamler um mm-hmm. noah fan melvin gordon phil Lindsay, i go on and on and on um but the loss of von miller really hurts that defense as well like you said graham so it's really i think a toss-up i feel like i'm gonna go with this this titans defense over the young broncos offense but at the same time the titans aren't really hot like they were last year um I'm going to go with the Broncos. You know what? Fuck it. But I wouldn't try this. I think it's going to be a very close game. It's going to come down to a couple of key plays. Um, yeah. But also, I think watch out for the Broncos this year. I think Drew Locke's going to have a breakout year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I also want to say this really, really, really quick. Because I'm picking the Titans to lose, that does not mean much of anything. Because I am very, very high on Tennessee this year. I think they're going to be a great team. I think they're going to do really big things. If you've read my article, I think they win the division and finish third in the AFC. I, I, I'm high on them. I'm very high on that team. But that's that's partially a product of the fact that when you look at the divisional opponents that they play, Jacksonville's going to be ass and everybody knows it. I've made my disgust for Phillip Rivers very clear over the course of this podcast. And – I really don't think that Houston's going to be able to do much of anything this year either. So I think that they're they're just going to run through that division. Um, and I think that they, I don't know that they'll make much noise in the playoffs, but I think that they can make something happen in the regular season. I just like Denver's mm-hmm. offense against this defense at this point in the year. I'm, I'm honestly really excited for this week. As I know I, oh, yeah. everyone, oh, I, we're all going to be going like, say San Francisco wins or, who else? I think I picked Carolina. I think Pat yeah. picked Detroit. Detroit. If one of those, if, if one of those teams wins, we're gonna hear it in the group chat. I'm very <laughs> excited. This is gonna be a very yeah. fun week. It's gonna be fun. Like Besides closing thoughts, I think that really wraps it up for us. Anybody yeah. have any closing remarks? Um, I'll say this one thing. We strayed away from talking about the Celtics because we're recording this before Game Seven. We were not gonna have this uploaded before it happens. So who? Right now, when you guys are listening, you already know what happened. But the officiating crew for tonight, the Raptors are 14-2 and two when Foster, Zarba, and uh, Guth- uh, Guthrie uh, are together. 
as a crew, and they have never they haven't lost a game this year when Scott Foster has been their ref. So oh God. there's a lot of talk about whether the game six was uh, rigged. There did the two minute report and said Ken Walker got fouled with two seconds left when it went to the line and attempted to take the lead. Obviously, it didn't happen, but there's a storyline to watch, especially if they lose. So, um, yeah, but go Celts. Yep. Yep. Two things. Hopefully, two we'll things. talk about them next week, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Well, whether they win or lose, we'll definitely be talking about we'll, them. Next yeah, week. We'll. True. Hopefully, but, we'll talk about them in good luck. One thing um, my preseason pick for the NBA Finals was Rocket Celtics. And the fact that that's still a reality, like a potential reality at this point in the year, is like, I'm like, ooh. You uh, picked so the Rockets? I did pick the Rockets Damn. at the preseason. But that was before I met you and before I started hating Russell Westbrook. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, that's that on that. I, I just love Kemba Walker. I would give my firstborn to see Kemba Walker win a championship. And uh, you can clip yeah. that. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> 15 oh. years when Graham when we know Graham has children I'm going to show him that clip Remember that. if Kemba Walker hey, doesn't win a ring it'll still be relevant yeah. Graham you uh, let's clip this right here if if the Celtics win and uh, Kemba takes finals MVP they win the finals you got to name your first son Kemba Kem- I will name okay. <laughs> no, I, okay so I already have a name picked out for my firstborn son but nobody knows what it is so I'm not going to say it. I, his middle name will be Kemba if Kemba okay. Walker was the finals and finals MVP this season okay we got it All right. kind of like an Isaiah Thomas thing yeah. how he was named I think that's really dope yeah, yeah exactly yeah. even though their names are spelled the same way yeah yeah that's but it's still- I, I did have, yeah I did have one more thing um, obviously the four of us know so Ride the Wave and Boston's Big Three is going through a humongous change right now. We're revamping everything. A big part of all this layout stuff that you're seeing around us is connected to that. We're revamping everything podcast related at Ride the Wave. And a big part of that is going to be upcoming merchandise for the New Guys podcast. So when that drops, I'm not sure about when it will. It, should be, it might be before this next episode drops. Uh, not this one that we're recording right now, but next week. So when that does, if you're a loyal listener, make sure to cop some. Uh, definitely put pictures of people in New Guys Pod merch on the on the page on Instagram when it comes about. So uh, mm-hmm. make sure to support the guys and you know just keep living sure. it up. Yep. Yep. One last thing before we wrap. Shout out to Finn Balor for winning the NXT title. I mean, I didn't talk wrestling this week, but I didn't get to watch that match. And going into that against Adam Cole, and Finn Balor is one of my top 10 favorite wrestlers ever. Um, I don't think I've ever went into my top 10 favorite wrestlers ever. Please don't right maybe, now. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> we're not going to get into that right now, but he's always been, he's always stood out to me. I've always loved the demon, the demon King persona. And to see him with the gold, it's nice again. So shout out to him. Mm. That's all Great. I got to say. All right. All right. I got well, nothing. if that, if that wraps it up, this has been season two, episode two of the New Guys podcast. Our everything's in the description. Our our handles. Check out Ride of the Wave Media, Boston's Big Three. Shout out to them. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here right now, going through this whole revamp and the fact that they included every podcast, well, besides Boston Power Hour. But that they've included. No, no, no. <laughs> Boston yeah. Power Hour. It's just not up yet. It's just not up yet. Okay. So. The fact that they chose us before them is saying something, right? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. We're going to leave it on that note, guys. We will see you all next week, and hopefully the Celtics will be in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yes, sir. Woo-hoo. Yep. Remember, yep. this is a we're, – we're recording this before. Just remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>